Good evening, New Covenant. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to veer away from our regular end of life, the end of me, what we've been doing on Monday and Tuesday. So tonight we want to move on and get into something dealing with what's going on in the faith life today. We're dealing with what's going on leading up to Easter. So we know we're leading into our Easter season and we're going today when Jesus came in to Bethlehem, when he came into Jerusalem, I'm sorry, when he came in triumphant and victorious. You see how he came in, people were so happy and throwing branches and clothes on the ground for him to walk on and all of that. They were really happy that he had came. The ninth verse of Zechariah says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look your, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Then we go in further into the scripture. We go into Matthew 21st chapter, verse number 1 says, And Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem. They came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Going to the village over there, he said, as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with his coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that he said. Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey, the coat to him, and threw their garments over the coat, and he sat on it. And most, most of the crowd, let me catch up, spent, spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the possession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. And the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's pray for a second. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that's been set aside for us to learn more of you, for us to learn, Father, the things that you have for us. Now, now, Father, as we seek out a new venture tonight, as we are doing this, Father, we need your, your patience. We need your guidance. We need your protection. So we need you to help us, Father, as we go further into this. We ask blessings upon everyone that has signed in, those that are watching, those that are listening. We pray, God, that Something will be said or done to bring them closer to you. Amen, amen, and amen. I said we're doing this a little different. We're not at the church tonight. We're at my home tonight, so y'all bear with me. But we're getting it together. We're getting it together. The first thing we're going to look at is a new king. They have a new a new king. It, Zechariah, the ninth, ninth chapter, ninth verse says, Rejoice, O Lord, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Israel. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. Now, the king had one characteristic that most would not associate with authority, regal authority, we would say. He was humble. He, he had a characteristic of humility. The new king would be meek and lowly as opposed to proud and haughty. He, he also would ride in on a donkey as opposed to a well-armored war horse. The Israelites were instructed not to trust in majestic war horses. They was, was, was taught not to trust something riding on a war horse. But let's look at these three 
things about this new king. First thing, he's just. He's just. It means he has, has salvation. He's, he's humble, humility. We talked about that. The new king would be meek and lowly as opposed to proud and haughty. And then he also would ride in on a donkey as opposed to a well-armored war horse. Isaiah 31 and 1 says, What sorrow awaits those who look to Egypt for help, trusting their horses and chariots and charioteers and depending on the strength of human armies instead of looking to the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Notice how the writer starts this off. He, he begins by exhorting the daughter of Zion and the daughter of Jerusalem to rejoice in Zechariah 9 and 9. See, here, here, here the former rep represented the inhabitants of Jerusalem, while the latter represented the nation of Israel as a whole. The, the, the prophet is informing them that their king is on the way. And they were going to know them by those, know him by those three traits. He's, he's, he's just, he, he's, he's humble, and he'd be riding on a donkey. They, they would know him by these three things. So, so how does... The prophet Zechariah described Jesus' triumphal entry. How does he describe his triumphal entry? He said he, he, is, he is righteous and victorious. He, he's riding on a donkey. He's riding on a donkey's coat. When they see these things, they would know this was their new king. The next thing, uh, uh, let's look at this part about a donkey for a king. As Jesus and his disciples, Matthew 21, verse 1 through 3, as Jesus and, his, and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. He said, go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, in, enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. As Jesus and his disciples descended upon Jerusalem, they came to a small village called Bethpage. That's in Matthew 21 and 1. That, that's when Jesus made what probably seemed like a strange request. A strange request. He, he, he made a strange request. He asked two unnamed disciples to go into the village and retrieve a donkey and a coat for him. And when, when the owner of the donkey and the coat learned that Jesus requested them, he gave them freely and joyfully. See, see Jesus chose to ride on a coat, a, a symbol of humility, which made his triumphal entry and crucifixion forever memorable. But the presence of a king on a coat did not keep the people from praising him. They perceived a prophet among them and greeted him as a king because what they had been reading was actually coming true. Question. Jesus made a strange request of these two disciples. When they arrived, everything was as he said. He, he, how might the disciples' faith inform us when we face tough decisions? How might the disciples' faith inform us when we face tough decisions? We're, we're faced with tough decisions every day, especially what's going on in our world right now. Should we go out of the house? Should we even go to the stores? Do, 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 can we do this? Can we do that? What are we supposed to do? We're listening to our governor every day at five. We're listening to our mayor, mayor every day at four. We're, we're listening to all these things going on in our head. But, but how may their faith inform us when we face tough decisions? I think Psalm 21, 121 says, Look unto the hills from which cometh thy help. All my help comes from the Lord. Our, our faith has to be in God. And when he shows us something, and he, he tells us something, and shows us something, and it comes true, that ought to strengthen our faith. Our faith should be strengthened in times like what we're going through right now. A grand entry into the city was common among those claiming to be the Messiah. But, but how did Jesus' entry differ from what the Jews had previously witnessed? How, how did it, 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 how was it different? It, it was different because he didn't come as a king. He came as a, a low king. He came as a king that, that, 
that that was that was that was humble, or a king that that felt felt for his people. He didn't come as a king looking down on his people. He came as a king that was with his people. Let, let, let's look at this third point: the prophecy fulfilled. Now, now this took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, verse number four: "Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on the donkey's coat." Now, now, kings were supposed to arrive with legions of bodyguards and officers and, and great riches, prop, prop, property and pomp and circumstance. Chariots were the usual mode of transportation. Or a king might ride on a mighty war horse. But, but the words of this prophecy gave the people a glimpse of the one to come, the, the one Matthew was writing about in this text, a king who comes meekly king who comes meekly. Now we see the previous verses in this passage complete the plan for Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The prophet Zechariah's words foretold God's promise to fallen humanity. And historically, these words were the complete opposite of the people's understanding of a king's interest. I told you kings were supposed to come with legions of bodyguards and all of that stuff. They're supposed to have been coming with, with, with great riches and pomp and circumstance and on, in, in a chariot or riding on a mighty war horse. But, but the words of this prophecy, I told you, I, I, I gave, the pop, gave the people a glimpse of the one to come, the one Matthew was writing about in the text, a king who comes meekly, king who comes meekly. Number, number, number four, let's look at the crowds, how the crowds worship the king, how the crowds worship the king. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the coat to him and threw their garments and, uh, over the coat, and then he sat on it. Mo and most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of their possession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. Verse 11 said, and the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. As Jesus entered, the crowd threw down their coats and branches along the road and shouted praises to him. Their, their actions honored him, and they greeted Jesus with shouts and singing of, of the hallowed psalms. That the new songs that were custom, customary greetings to people journeying to Jerusalem for the Passover. But, but, but the people, the people knew Jesus was much more, much more than just another traveler. They were honoring him for the miracles they had seen him perform. But the, the people knew he was just more than, than a traveler. The, the throngs of people, the, the excitement that the, that the Messiah had come and the, 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 the deafening Shouts of praise created a, a, a powerful momentum in the city, leading the possession with children, not soldiers, and who sang his praises and shouted his glory. And as the momentum grew, the local religious leaders counseled him to quiet the people, get them to be quiet. Let's quiet the people down. But however, knowing that his end was near, Jesus told them if, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. See, see this peculiar response indicated that Jesus' kingship was not based on recognition from the people, but on the foundations of the city and the temple, which would declare his glory. Jesus was prophecy fulfilled, and no human proclamation could ultimately confirm or deny that truth. The crowd replied that he was a prophet, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Some joined in the praise and others were disappointed when they saw Jesus enter the city without the majestic fanfare. But my question is, what did the people say and do as Jesus entered Jerusalem? What was the significance of their words and, and their actions? You have to go to Matthew 21, 8 and 9. 
And it tells us that most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the possession. And the people all around him were shouting, praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest, highest heaven. What was the significance of their words and their actions? They believed that their Messiah had come. So what was the difference between the people of Jerusalem and the multitude who went before Jesus? Look at verse 10 and 11. That the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? Who is this guy? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now we can really get out of here. I hope y'all got something with this. Take, take this with you. Let's, let's make an effort this week to remove something from our lives that can become idolatrous. If, if you look at what our world is going through, what we are going through at this present time, a whole lot of things have been taken from us. A whole lot of things have been taken from us that we, we cherish. Things that we idolize were taken away from us. I, some people idolize their job, just taken away from us. Some people idolize the church building, it's been, it's been taken away from us. A whole lot of things that we cherish have been taken away from us. And I, and I think God's trying to get us to understand that, 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 that these things come and go, but he's a constant. He wants us to understand these things that we trust in, these things that we put so much value on, really have no value at all. We should put our, our trust and all of our value should be on him. I ask you a question, how many days, how many hours a day do you spend looking at the news, tracking the cultural news? How much time do you spend online, on your telephone, on your computer? How much time do you spend looking at things that really do not matter? How, 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 about, how about taking a break from it? How about taking a break from all these things that we deem to be so important, that we deem to be so valuable? How about taking a break from some of this stuff? How about setting aside some time to reflect on whether it has hindered or enhanced our relationship with Jesus? I believe Jesus is trying to get us to come back to him. He shut everything down on us. He, he, he shut down the world as we know it. The world as we knew it three weeks ago, it is no more. I, I watched the news tonight. I watched the news. I watched the news. Ford Motor Company is shutting down. They're shutting down indefinitely. They're shutting down until they say it's going to open again. The church, we can't go into church house and have open worship with, with a crowd of people that's been shut down. We have to do it online. We have to think of other avenues to do it. The world as we know it has been taken away from us. So let's set aside. Let's do what, what we said. Let's set aside some time and let's reflect on whether it has hindered or enhanced our relationship with Jesus. These things that we put so much value in, have they, have they hurt us? What have they done? Have they hurt us or have they, have they brought us closer? Some would say they brought us closer. Some would say they took us further away. But I think this time, these, these next few weeks, these weeks that we are approaching, I heard our president say the other day that we're going to be shut down as we are at least until April the 31st. Who knows? It might go further than that. We looked at some, some things the other day saying it wasn't going to peak to the middle of May. So, so we don't know Actually, what's going to happen, let's use this time to get closer to him. Let's use this time to get closer to him, the one who is able. The one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or imagine. Let's use this time to get closer to him. The songwriter said, just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. I'll be daily walking close to thee. Let, let, let's get closer to him in this time that we have to be alone. May God bless you. May God keep you. That is my prayer. Amen.